What is up, you jackwagons? I am Speed Fury, and today I'm starting in a brand new What If. Now, this What If is not from uh, My Hero Academia. This is my first What If taking place in the Pokemon universe, specifically the Pokemon anime. And yes, I know I should have probably done another Pokemon uh, What If before this um, that was involving Ash, but eh, we, we know how Ash's story goes, and I am going to include him in this series. He's actually going to be quite frequently on in the series. But, yeah, this is what if I was in the Pokemon anime, specifically an alternate version of me. Because, if you don't know, I'm not very smart. This version of me is. Well, I am smart with certain things, but computers is not one of them. This version of me is. So, I, well, as you can see, I've got like a cardboard box here, because, well, I'm not going to show my... I already have the some of the drawings done, but I'm going to first start off by, say, by saying... Um, Let's say my character is born in Unova, and he's already wicked smart, as he's uh, from like a young age of 10. And for his first Pokemon, he picks Snivy, and it's a female Snivy, but not only that, but it's a very odd-looking Snivy. Instead of it being um, most, most prominently green, it's more of a tannish color, and it's the white where a Snivy normally is, like, like uh, you know, where its mouth is and stuff, that's orange. It also has like diamonds, go diamond shaped patterns on its back, and at the end of its tail, instead of having a leaf like shape, it has what looks like a rattle of a rattlesnake. Basically, this is a regional fo form of Snivy that is more looking like a rattlesnake over a grass snake. And what type will it be when it's fully evolved? Well, it's actually grass and ground. I would kind of alter between grass and ground and grass and poison, but I decided to keep it grass and ground because I can still use poison. It, its signature move is still a poison type move, but offers like the stab. Now, um, of course, Drax just assumed this is a shiny. That, that's my character's name, by the way, is Drax. He was he was named named that after his uh, well, let's just say, let's just say his parents kind of wanted a kid, hid their kid to be like really popular and stuff, and that really wasn't what he wanted. What he wanted to do was just go on his own journey and kind of like he his his goal in life is to make sure that is to make all Pokemon and humans be able to understand one another by learning how to be able to give Pokemon the ability to speak human language without any of that, that, um, uh, without, like, any limitations holding each other back. But in order to do this, he needs to, he wanted to figure out how to, how to actually give them the ability to speak. And he also fi figured that he needs to make sure that the Pokemon that he does this with are okay with it. So his plan is to go on a journey and gain trust with his Pokemon. And then eventually let them in on what he he plans to do with with his uh, with his dream of wanting po people and Pokemon to become closer. And as he's going through his journey, he's doing the whole gym badges coll collecting thing. He meets some friends along along the way, but for the most part, he does it on his own. He even made his own a little a little uh, upper. He like made an exosuit that covers like his chest and his arms, but it also functions as a, as his own uh, Pokemon storage device. He can carry up to 18 Pokemon with him at once. So basically three teams, and he can swap them out. At the moment, though, he only has six Pokemon. which he, And those and the Pokemon that he's currently using are usually stored in, like, the gauntlets on his arms. He also ran, ran into a... He, one of his closest friends actually made, made him a uh, a cloak, so that... Just that just out of kindness. And the cloak he wears is, well... He always wear, wears it. Unfortunately, this has given a lot of pe people a misunderstanding of, of who he is. They think that he's some kind of mysterious trainer, which has been become his nickname. But in reality, he's not. He just likes wearing the cloak. And he's quite the opposite of mysterious. He doesn't exactly like try to hide who he is or anything like that. But now, I will show you the picture of him. This is him. I made the skin a bit too dark, but I think it's fine. And uh, as for his uh, exosuit so the rest so these little uh these little um blue uh, uh cables they connect to the backpack and the backpack has like has like 12 other pokeballs inside of it but these are the ones he uses currently and his team currently consists of of his superior which has now evolved and because it's a regional variant it looks very different from a regular superior it, is, it still has its arms and legs and instead of it you and it has blasters like guns it has three of them. One of them is its tail, and the other two, and the other two are holstered on its on its uh, on its thighs, or her thighs. His uh, his superior is female. Um, 
But as he's continu continuing, uh, sorry, let me, let me t say who the other ones are. He didn't stop at at uh, Unova. He after he got all the gym badges and tried out the Pokemon League. He lost, by the way, because he didn't. He wasn't really interested in becoming like the strongest. He's just interested in in uh, in learning how to you know co communicate with Pokemon better. He eventually decides, I'm gonna go to the other regions. The first region he he goes to is Sinnoh. While in while in Sinnoh. Um, he catches a few other Pokemon, three Pokemon which he adds to his team, to his team. One of them being another seemingly regional variant. This Pokemon was a Baneri. The Baneri did not have any of the any of the noticeable um, features that a that a Sin I guess I could, should say Hisuia because Sinoian looks sounds weird. Um, normal Baneri, uh, he doesn't have any of those features, and yes, his Baneri's male. Um, his Baneri instead was more of a black and black color with a bit of brown. He also, it also had some gray features, and it seemed to have more messy hair. It also was ground and fighting type instead of being instead of being normal type like like usual. Drax chalked this up to him, to the Baneri having some kind of uh have some, having been able to unlock its mega evolution capabilities but like not being able to mega evolve at the same time event eventually um he also runs into a into a group of ralts and he catches all four of them now now he didn't catch them again against their will he actually asked them if they would like to get stronger one of the ralts two of the ralts specifically confused the heck out of him one of them kept was more interested in in develop, in learning um physical moves but it was female the he there was actually two female and two male um the part that confused him about this is because well female uh curlia can't evolve into into galade only male can and no matter what he tried even after um all of his worlds had evolved into curlia and one of his curlia evolving into gardevoir he couldn't convince his uh, curlia to to uh um, not use physical moves because, as we all know, Gardevoir can't take physical moves. And, but this, of course, Curly didn't listen. He eventually did get a Dawnstone and evolved one of his Ralts in, into Gallade, but the other Ralts seemingly was not interested in Gallade, in, in becoming a Gallade. I mean, the other Curlia. The other two Curly he had were strange. They didn't want to ha have evolved into either one of these new forms. I mean, in, into Gardevoir or Gallade, which, which was kind of like confusing to him and also a little bit um what's the word i'm looking for worrying he was worried that that either one wouldn't be able to you know be as strong as they wanted to be until one day when he when he was trapped traveling with two of his uh with two of his curly because he took he put gardevoir and gallade Actually, he's traveling with all of them, but he has Gardevoir and Gallade as, as reserve teams. They're still out of their Pokeballs, because he doesn't really like putting them in their Pokeballs if they, if they don't want to be in there. But he, uh, as he's traveling with them, he notices that his his female Corellia picks up a a Leaf Stone. She, do, she doesn't, well, no, not a Leaf Stone, a, uh, a Grassy Plate, I think that's what it's called. Um, doesn't really, uh, really use it for anything, just picks it up and decides to hold on to it. As for his uh, ma as for his male Curlia, he he picks up a uh, what seemingly looks like a metal coat. A metal coat isn't really useful to a to a Curlia, so he doesn't really know why he would want to why he would want to hold on to that. He didn't really think anything of it, so they begin training some more, trying to get them as strong as possible. He even tried to help help his female Curlia, who has a habit of wanting to learn physical moves, how to learn better physical moves. Because so far the only move it knows is Thunder Punch, and that's not really good for certain typing, especially when when they're up against Pokemon that has physical advantage. As they're traveling to the next next uh, area, which happens to actually be um, uh, Snow Point City, there because they're still in Sinnoh. Um, so he he does have a full team of he do, he still uses his uh his Baneri, who is close to evolving into Lopunny, or at least what he hopes is a Lopunny. He doesn't know he doesn't know if it's gonna become an an entirely different Pokemon. He begins just kind of walking with his uh, Pokemon to the, to the gym. He just still challenges the gyms, but he doesn't really, you know, take them seriously. He's gotten strong enough to, work, to where he doesn't actually have to worry about too many gym challenges. 
because of how overpowered his team has gotten, specifically with his superior. His superior is broken as heck because of the fact that she's gr ground and grass and has a ha and has an extremely powerful move called Toxic Shot, which fires which fires uh, what is essentially energized poison at at um at well enemies. Not only that, it it can either have the effect of, of par paralysis or or poisoning an enemy. It kind of differs. Most of the time it's poisoning, though, which is really useful. And while they're tra while they're traveling, um, his male Curlia begins evolving, which is which he assumes that he that it's going to evolve into a uh, into a um, Gardevoir because there's no other way to get there's no other way to get a Galate other than a Dawnstone. And he's surprisingly he notices that uh, his uh, Curly is not freaking out because his Curly, remember, don't want to evolve into Guard of War or Gallade, which is kind of shocking him. But instead, the the Pokemon it evolves into looks completely different. Its body having a metallic sheen and being black and red in color. It also seemingly had one of its eyes replaced with rob with what looked like a metallic robotic one, and it had two what looked like blasters on its back. One of its arms had also turned into turned into a arm cannon, but it had no sign of the fact that it was a Gallade, or a Gardevoir for that matter. This meant he discovered a new Pokemon, a new Pokemon that 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 could evolve, that that Curlia could evolve into. A Pokemon that evolved with a metal coat, and not by trading. He knew that that Pokemon with, that usually held metal metal coats evolved with trading, but this one only evolved by leveling up. He, he jotted down everything he could, and but what really took him took him off guard is the fact that now his Pokemon could speak English. That really shocked him. He looked he looked at his new Pokemon and, and asked, "Did you just speak English?" The Pokemon replied with a robotic voice, saying, "Yes, I can now speak full English thanks to my new form." My f he then his Pokemon explained to him that his uh. That when he was younger, his parents had actually explained, his parents, or his, uh, I guess, mother and father, I, it, that would be either two Gardevoirs or a Gardevoir and Gallade, um, had explained to him that there were two other evolutions of the of the Ralts line. And those two evolutions, one of them, unfortunately, is, is a, is, was a Gallade at one point, but it was experimented on by humans. And usually wild versions of this Pokemon are extremely dead dangerous to humans because they actively seek out to hunt and hurt them, or at least most of their kind do. This Pokemon was known as Gyroblast, and it was a dark and steel type. It hated humans, and it was the opposite of Gallade. Instead of being being a guardian that protects its trainer, it would be a Pokemon that actively hunts the human, as though it was a living ter version of the Terminator. This is Gyroblast. Something that Drax also found out about about the Gyroblast line, as well as the other Pokemon that he still had yet to figure out what it was, they could both change type at will, depending on what the item they were holding. But because and it actually affects ha what happens when they evolve. But because the only thing that um, his Curlia was holding when it evolved was a metal coat, it evolved into the basic Gyroblast, which was just dark and steel. All Gyroblasts were steel, but his Gyroblast was the regular one, which was a dark type as well. So every other, there were many kinds of gyroblast, which usually stuck together in groups, but some of them were more dangerous than others. He looked over at, at his female curly and asked if, if what it was planning to do the whole time was to evolve into the other one, and asked what, if it was a physical fighter, with curly and nodding yes, and even gyroblast confirming this, saying that, that both gyroblast and, and the other one were known to be enemies. He never learned the name of the other one. All he knew was that, was that it was the it was it, its kind had been devoted to protecting humanity, unlike Gyroblast, which de, which was devoted to destroying humanity. However, because of the fact that he raised his Curlia or his Ralts from when it was young, he didn't really have to worry about his Gyroblast trying to kill him anytime soon. But it wasn't it wasn't long before they they st he started trying to figure out how to evolve his female Curlia into this Pokemon, and it turns out that this Pokemon it can only be female. This uh, new other this other evolution that could that is it potentially in the uh, Ralts line. He assumed that they picked up the Pixie Plate for a reason. I mean, not the Pixie Plate, the uh, the Grassy Plate, because it wanted to be a Grass type when it evolved. 
and so that meant that it was it would probably be its other typing would probably be the regular one that always that it always had. They couldn't really figure out anything about, about how to do it, so they kind of moved on. And eventually, they got to a store that sold evolution stones, and Curlia seemed to be drawn to one specific one, a shiny stone. He realized that that must be how they evolved. So after buying the shiny stone, he gave it to Curlia to see if she would evolve. And lo and behold, she did. Curlia evolved. But what, what was even more surprising was the two long protrusions that, that came out of her head after evolving. They looked like spiky vines, and her, and her, uh, her hair, or whatever um, Gardevoir and Gallade and the other evolutions have on, that, on the top of their head that looks like hair, became a darker green instead of being the paler green that it was before, and the spot, and the red spike that it usually had, that Gardevoir usually had, and Gallade had as well, was no more visible. It was the same with, with, with Gyroblast. He didn't have that red spike either. It also, instead of having a dress like Gardevoir, had a, a skirt instead that was shaped kind of like thorny vines. It was red in in uh, appearance with blue streaks or with blue uh, extra coloring on it. Same with her, Same with the other parts of her body. She also seemed to have much more physically stronger legs, unlike Gardevoir, meaning that what he thought was correct, this Pokemon was a fighting type. Its body was much more stronger, and its, and its vines seemed to move around like, like it were extra limbs. This was the Pokemon, Griefist. Unlike Gyroblast, Griefist could not actually speak um, human language, because, well, Gry Gyroblast was designed with one thing in mind, the, the ability to speak English. It was actually given partial human DNA. So basically, he had a human-Pokemon hybrid on his team at this point in time. That's when he figured it out from his Gyroblast. If he if he infuses some of his Pokemon with human DNA, but like not to where it ma it makes them resent him, he can e he can then be able to communicate with Pokemon easier. At this point in time, he had he had been he had caught in a few other Pokemon, one of which being a uh, Glaceon, as he had as he had actually. Well, not a Glaceon, it was an Eevee, but he had evolved it recently into Glaceon. And he had actually traveled to Paldea because he heard of something st of strange happenings going on in the crater of Paldea. He actually had to gain permission from someone to actually enter the crater of Paldea, though, in order to, you know, get uh, the information he needed. As he got down there, he note he figured out what it was. These w A bunch of weird Pokemon that seemed to be both in the past and the future. But they were obviously r variants of Pokemon that existed now in the present. One of these Pokemon caught his eye. It was a Pokemon that looked like Gardevoir and Gallade put together, but like a robot. He found this interesting, but also was kind of disgusted about how about how the, of how it was put together. It seemed to be more robot than actual Pokemon, but yet it behaved like one. Its midsection, specifically, was what really threw him off, because that could easily be exploited and, and harm could be done to the Pokemon. The fact that it didn't have a mouth also kind of freaked him out a little bit. Some of the other Paradox ones that look like Rob some of the other Pokemon lookalikes that looked like robots had mouths. Why didn't this one have a mouth? It disturbed him. It, lo it looked like it, it was meant to strike fear into people. And that's not what Gallade and Gardevoir stood for. He didn't like that. So, after a while of him trying not to be killed by it, and ev eventually explaining to it that he doesn't want, want to harm it, but he wants to help it, it eventually allowed him to take it, take it with him. He then took, it to, took the, his new Pokemon to his laboratory where he wanted to modify it so it was a bit more, well, approachable and looked less easy to take down with a, sing with a single hit to the mid-torso. He fixed up some of the, ge some of the gears in it, and uh, turns, turns out that it really is just a robot. It, it's a robot that looks like an older Pokemon. He didn't know what the, what the, pigtails, the pigtail things were for, though, but he, ma but he made them bigger as he, as he learned that they were actually, well, kind of power conduits of some kind. He then, after his finished upgrade, I haven't actually finished this drawing yet. I have to, you know, do the outlining like I do with these guys, with the little black outlines that I do around each one. Anyway, after getting his new new member to the team, he wondered to himself, "Am I just gonna have a full t a full team of of a uh, of guard of the Ralts line on? Well, I'm not. I'm not. I don't plan on getting rid of Superior because Superior is my partner. But then he w wondered to himself. He asked his Gyroblast if it was possible for Gyroblast to be female. And Gyroblast said, as far as he knows, no. You, usually Gyroblast are only male. It's very rare that, 
it's never been spoken of a female uh, gyroblast. This, of course, um, intrigued Drax. Because, well, first off, Gallade is only male, but Gardevoir can be both male and female, but still look exactly the same. He wondered if it was the opposite for Gar for for Gyroblast and Griefus because of the fact that they that they were also polar opposites, like how Gardevoir and Gallade were. Except in this case, the male was the special attacker and the female was was the physical attacker. He wondered if if there was a way to to get a female version of Gyroblast, since there was obviously a way to get a male version of Gardevoir. But he kept go going, and now that he had his team that he preferred, he at, he went around with his with his team of Pokemon, asking them which ones would like to first be the ones to test out the DNA, um, the DNA infusion, to see if to see if he could figure out a way to meld their DNA so that he could speak so the Pokemon could speak English. Surprisingly, his first Pokemon to the Pokemon that that spoke up first was, um. Glaceon, who had recent, who, who was his Eevee that recently evolved. Now his Glaceon hadn't had a lot of battle experience, but he pro he promised that Glaceon would be the first to be to be able to speak English if, or human if that's what if that's what she wanted. So what he needed to do was he needed to get human DNA, but because his Glaceon was female, he didn't want to use his own DNA for obvious risky purposes. So he needed to talk to somebody who was experienced with ice types. He traveled to Kanto learning about the Elite Four member, Lorelei, but learning that she had recently actually traveled over to the Orange Islands, so then he had to go all the way over there. When he finally talk talked to her, he, a he asked for a sample of her blood as he is trying to figure out how to make um, Pokemon be able to speak English, and he figured that it would probably be better if he did so if he got blood a blood sample from somebody who actually had ice-type experience. She she uh, offered offered yes, and so he made sure to take the blood sample back to his laboratory. He, on a separate okay, I, uh, with a separate experiment, he actually wanted to make, wanted to um get a hold of the mysterious battle bond ability that he heard of that he heard nin that a ninja village had once told him about, a, an ability that a Greninja had. And they actually happened to ha happened to have a uh, a scale from or a couple of scales left over from the uh, from the f Greninja that they spoke about from so long ago. So he managed to get some. DNA samples from from those. Unfortunately, he was up working late one one night, and he accidentally mixed both the both the uh, gr both the battle bond DNA that he had and the DNA from Lorelei together. He already perfected the um the DNA to be able to be useful for for Glaceon, but he wasn't paying attention and mixed those two together. This did not go well for him. After he was done with the experiment. With the experiment, he asked Glaceon to step into this machine, th into the machine that would infuse her DNA with the blood. He still hadn't realized that he accidentally mixed them together. Upon fu fusing Glaceon with the DNA, as Glaceon stepped out, Drax's eyes widened as he realized that he mu must have done something wrong, because Glaceon's appearance was completely different. It was only supposed to uh, to allow Glaceon to sp speak English, not allow, not tra not mutate her body in any way. He then looked over to see, looked over to see that that he accidentally mixed Lorelai's, um, the, Lorelai's blood with the, with the, um, with the, uh, Gren with the Greninja substance, the Battle Bond Greninja substance. In doing so, this, re this resulted in Glaceon taking on a more, more of an, uh, taking on the appearance of, of Lorelai, as well as achieving the features of Glaceon, being that now, she had the body of a human, a female human, but was still a Glaceon. This did not go well for him. He instantly ran ran out of the laboratory, telling Glaceon to stay there while trying to keep his eyes off of, while trying to make sure that he wasn't looking at Glaceon because he knew that 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 was not okay. He instantly went to his sis sister's room and because yes, he has a sister. This sister is actually adopted. He began. He immediately said, "Asterisk, I need to borrow some of your clothes. Do you have any clothes that are that are suited for an adult woman?" He said, she not she wasn't looking at him and simply asked, what, you accidentally turn yourself into a girl or something? He's like, you can hear my voice. I do not sound like a girl at all. I accidentally turned Glaceon into a into a human Pokemon hybrid. She turned around and looked at him like he like he'd grown a second head. For and then he just pointed to his laboratory. He's like, go check for yourself if you don't believe me. She went and checked, and then a few minutes later came back looking looking at him looking at him in rather in with horror. He's like, I didn't do it on purpose. I only meant, meant to give her the ability to speak human language. 
She can, but now she's got the human body. And I'd rather not ha have to have to use her in battle if I have to look at what is essentially a human's body naked. I don't know what I did wrong, but I have to. But I have. But I have to figure it out. I have to figure out why Glaceon has taken on the appear on a human more human appearance. So she eventually did she actually had to go and buy some clo some clothes because she didn't actually have anything that was in well, Lorelei's size because because of the fact that she's still the same age as Drax. A little bit younger, but still the same age. And so Glaceon got some got some new clothes or human clothes. D she didn't wear the shoes though. She preferred not to wear the shoes because you know, Glaceon would still rather have the ability to walk, to feel the ground beneath her feet. And the bi the biggest unfortunate si side effect from, from all of this was the fact that, Gla that Glaceon actually started liking her new appearance. And it was only for, it was for the dumbest reason Drax could imagine, well, at least from his perspective. She just liked the feeling of having hands, so that she can actually pick stuff up now with her hands and not her mouth. So now, here is the picture of Glaceon. And her design is based off of the, uh, off of Lorelei's design, not the one from the games. We're, this is taking place in the anime universe, so we're talking about anime Lorelei's appearance. Um, I don't have a picture on hand, but if you know, then you know what Lorelei looks like. I don't know why my mind immediately went to Lorelei, but I also tried to make, make her clothes look similar to that one. Except, you know, replacing the pencil skirt with a with a regular skirt, because I don't think a pencil skirt really suits Glaceon. Especially because if she's in battle, she's going to need to have some movement. And a pencil skirt would seemingly restrict that movement. Or at least that's what I think it would do. He then, he then Drax got to work making a, trying to make a reversal, like a reversal serum to turn Glaceon back to normal. When he finally finished it, though, Glaceon didn't want to go back to normal, because she liked being able to pick stuff up with her hands, and she'd grown too used to battling in, in this new form. He still kept the formula on hand, just in case he accidentally made that mistake again, and made sure to keep the keep the new formula he had obtained from the Battle Bond Greninja away from the stuff he used for, for helping his Pokemon speak English. N now understanding that he had the ability to actually give his Pokemon the ability to speak English, and that he wouldn't make that mistake again, Superior was willing to try it out. And so, she was given the ability to speak English. There was still that weird side effect that ha that had a habit of making their bodies look a bit more human, but, like, not as bad as it was with Glaceon. Superior still, for the most part, looked the same, just had more of a feminine figure that, than, than she had before. This time, he actually used his sister's DNA, because he didn't want to want to use... Um, he didn't want to use uh, Lorelei because of the fact that of what happened with Glaceon, and he didn't want Lorelei to, you know, get after him and call him stuff that he obviously wasn't. And so, here is his superior. And yes, um, before you, before anyone says anything, uh, these uh, purple things, they're not, um, these are part of her body. So these, like, little pointy things right here, they extend into, like, blades, so they can use the move, which is called Poison Blade. And so... Remember what I said, this Pokemon is actually grass and ground, not grass and poison, but it does have the ability to use poison-type moves. And uh, here's, here's what the guns look like, right here. And then here's the other one holster right there, and then his the end of her tail also shoots um, poison. I tried to make it look like still like the original Superior, but also giving like, like the new version of Superior. Anyway, he then, his Lopunny was, was then ready to test, and he was... Well, he got like the biggest benefit out, benefit out of it because he was a lot faster and a lot stronger. He used his own DNA for for his uh for his Lopany, for his Lopany because well, he was already a guy and so was his Lopany. So his Lopany, which was still the regional variant, that's what I'm talking about here, had finally obtained his new his new form. He was now able to run faster thanks to his more human human blood and he was able to spe speak speak English. Drax instantly regretted this, though, because Lopunny kept ch challenging everybody else to ba to battle, and losing for the most part. But he still kept him kept him around. Now he had a full team of a team of Pokemon that were all that could all speak English, including his Griefist, which he did which he did give her give her the human DNA as well. He then began traveling across the the other uh, regions. He wanted to to learn about what what other po what Pokemon could be like. He wanted to introduce people to his new method of teaching Pokemon how to speak English. 
he also wanted to figure out how, how the type changing how to how to um how the type changing works with his gyro blasting griefist. And one day he began he was simply he had he was in Kanto, and he was walking nearby a town that he didn't really know existed called Pallet Town. Although he learned that there was somebody named Professor Oak there. He'd never heard of this guy, but he assumed that he was good if he was giving people their their starter Pokemon, which he assumed were the grass, the grass, fire, and water that usually there were. And then he saw a boy pulling a Pikachu on a rope. The boy seemingly was very novice at what he was doing, and he the Pikachu didn't seem to like him very much. Drax walked up to the boy and asked him, What are you doing? The boy looked at him, looked at him, and said, "This Pikachu won't listen to what I'm what I'm trying to listen to me, and he won't. He doesn't seem to like me." He's like, "Well, have you ever thought of what 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 your Pikachu was thinking?" He said, "I can't speak Pokemon," said said the boy. "Luckily for you, you don't have to." He sent out his his, uh, his Griefist, which Ash, of course, had never seen this Pokemon before. That, that's who that's who it is. If he didn't figure it out yet, and Griefist translated for the Pikachu, say, saying that. The fir that the first thing that he was greeted to when he came out of that Pokeball, which he didn't like being in, was a hug from a human he didn't know, which, of course, would freak him out and made him shock, shock Ash. Ash, realizing that he wasn't in, in the wrong there, apologized to Pikachu, but was also amazed at the fact that his Pokemon could speak English. Ash, th he, then he then walked up to a Ash and, sa and said, You seem to be need more help than most of the other beginner trainers I've seen. You're a lot more excitable than... than, than uh, than, well, some of the more new trainers. You need some guidance. So Drax traveled with Ash for a bit. Coming across, he taught Ash the key um, components when it comes to catching Pokemon and made sure that he, you know, didn't treat his Pokemon badly. He also helped Ash and Pikachu get along better. And then the, the whole situation with the Spearow happened. And unlike last time where Ash, you know, is the main problem that causes it um the spear were just mean in general so they just kind of attack him and this is where drax actually sent, sends a drax's griefist who is still after pokeball at the time changes her her appearance for the first time drax realizing that it's a thing they can just do on command depending on what they're fighting because he'd never actually used griefist in a battle before and griefist appearance had changed from being the uh from being grass type which was weak to flying to being ice type, the pig, the long thorny vine pigtails on it on its head had ch had changed into what looked like dra looked like pigtails that were more laid laid back on on her back, with the rest of her body seemingly covered in like a cottony substance. The pigtails also ha could like stretch up and transform into dragon heads and blast ice energy out of them. They could also be used at used as weight as extra you know limbs. It seemingly was a theme that Griefus never had only two arms; it always had more than that. Luckily, Griefus and Pikachu were able to hold hold off the Spearow, the Spearow flock, mostly with Griefus doing most of the work because of how powerful she already was. As as they uh, got away, a girl on a on a bike with red hair wa walked up to them, asking them if they were they were okay. And then then double taking, then she did a double take when she noticed his, his uh, Griefus, which was a Pokemon she had never seen before. She asked him what that was, and he said it was a Griefus, a Pokemon from another. Uh, original variant of a, another Pokemon from a, another region. He didn't know where it was from. He just knew that it was a re it was a uh, an alternate evolution for the Curlia and Ralts line. One of the two that he knew of, at least. Mi the girl re revealed herself as Misty, saying that she that she was a water type expert. Drax looked looked at her and noticed that she only had two Pokemon. Before asking, if you're a water type expert, why do you only have two Pokemon? This, of course, didn't really sit well with, with uh, Misty, and she she said, I'll have you know I'm the gym leader. Real. He, and then he, Drax then look, looked down at her and, sa and said, you're the gym leader? I thought the gym leader, I thought there were three gym leaders at the at the water type gym in this region. Misty, realizing that this guy knew more than, than, than he actually, uh, more, knew more than, well, she thought, she then asked him where he's from, and he said he's from the Unibo region saying that he had actually done his research on Kanto before coming here, figuring that he might as well com come to Kanto to see what, what other Pokemon he could, well, catch or 
sh show people his um his uh discovery that he learned how to help Pokemon speak English or you know whatever language they need to. Iris, I mean not Iris, Misty, um was at first didn't believe him, didn't believe that he had ma made a way for Pokemon to speak English until his grief had started speaking, telling him, accusing Misty of calling her trainer a liar. Misty was shocked at this, and he, and even, like, stared at, Gr at Griefist for a bit. Yeah, you're not the first person to react that way, said Drax. Anyway, I'm helping Ash tra travel and do the gym challenge. If you're really a so-called gym leader of the, of the Cerulean City gym, then I expect that they won't have any problems letting you win when you go over there. He also, he also told Misty that a gym leader should not be away from their gym, and then she explained that the, the three gym leaders that were currently there were her sisters, and they were and they were terrible gym leaders. And Drax didn't believe her at first, but they continued. They came across the, the uh, Pewter City gym, and Drax had already read ahead of time that the gym leader wa was supposedly um, a uh, young man by the name of Brock. This confused him because... Because at first, last time he read it, it was uh, another man who seemed. And but when he got a good look at Brock, he realized that this must that Brock was the son of this guy. He he asked Brock about it. asked asked why he was the gym leader and not his father. Brock said that his father hasn't been back in years. He'd gone on his journey and never came back. So he's having to take care of his siblings and stuff. Dr Drax did not like the sound of this because he j he he said. He saw it as a gym leader shirking their responsibilities and leaving their family. And so, he's, he said that if, if he ever runs into his father, then he'll bring him back here and, get, and give him a good threat, give him a good uh, beating to, show, to tell him that he shouldn't leave his family behind. Brock appreciated the, 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 uh, the gesture, but said there was no, no need, as he didn't really do it out of malice. However, when... When the gym battle began, Brock was surprised to learn that Ash's Pikachu had le had learned moves that Pikachu had no right learning. One of these move one of these moves that Pikachu had had learned was a move that went by went by the name of Surf. Now, how did Pikachu learn this move? Well, let's just say Dr Drax uh, gave Pikachu the ability to learn Water type moves thanks to a little serum he gave Pikachu. Saying that pe that Pokemon should not be able be restricted by typing, that if a Pokemon can swim, it should be able to learn Surf. If a Pokemon should is able is able to jump really high, then there should be no reason why it shouldn't be able to fly by using some some kind of moves to give it the ability of flight. So he gave Pikachu that that serum that uh, that allowed Pikachu to unlock what is essentially abilities that a Pikachu should not have the ability to learn. Of course, this shocked Brock, but he didn't really think anything of it, which meant Pikachu kind of sold the entire gym. Now, Ash hasn't actually caught any other Pokemon and yet, and he only has Pikachu. And Misty is traveling with them, but she doesn't get along with either Drax or Ash. Main Ash because he always instigates fi problems between the two, and Drax beca because he's, well, she thinks that, he, that he's a bit, you know, overbearing. Acts like a acts like the older brother that she doesn't really need. After the gym battle was over, Ash um, Brock's father came back and took took back the gym back in, like how that happens in the orig in the original. And Brock travels with the with the other three in, on their journey, or technically Ash's journey, because Drax is only there to kind of, kind of support Ash. The next gym gym on their list was actually the the uh, um Cerulean City gym. I keep forgetting the name. I I have to remember that that each that each city is named at, named after colors. And as they as they continued, Drax was then proven wrong when he realized that Misty's siblings were terrible gym leaders, just like she said. Learning this, he he told the gym the gym leaders that he was actually a really powerful trainer, and that if they didn't, and that their whole job as gym leaders was to do their job and not like you know not do it just because they lost a couple times. That's the whole point. They're supposed to te they're supposed to lose so that the trainers can get their gym badges. And yes, they aren't supposed to like purposely throw the match, but they are supposed to still like, you know, if they lose, 
then it doesn't matter if they if they lost. Who cares if they lost? They're supposed to be ch teaching the next generation of trainers on how on how to be trainers. And uh, hearing they of course don't really listen because Misty's sisters are stupid. Like we all can agree on that. They're really dumb. And so he he says that Misty should be the one in charge of this gym, not not you idiots. This of course make, makes them angry, and they decide to actually ba battle him, which they lose extremely hard. He pretty much one shots their their entire team using his Griefist in its grass type form. All of their Pokemon were not very strong, and unlike in the in the original, they had actually beaten the other trainers there, or at least one of them. So they had some Pokemon left over to battle. Then Misty decided that she would be the one to battle Ash. It did not go well for her because she like she like she. Uh, like in the original, she only has two Pokemon. Ash does only have one still, but at least he did a good job. Then it came, then Drax decided to ask Ash a question. He said, Ash, why haven't you caught any other Pokemon besides Pikachu? Ash actually said, claimed that he wanted to catch some, some more powerful, Poke, powerful Pokemon, like, uh, like Drax had. And Drax simply told him that it's not always about power. If you catch a Pokemon, you're going to have to train it to get stronger. Ash knew this, but he would he would rather wait until, you know, he felt it was it was the right Pokemon to catch. As they went on their way to get to the next gym, which which was in um Saffron City, they came across a rather strange sight. There was a Charmander on a rock. The Charmander ha had said that he was waiting for his trainer, thanks to the translation of, of Gyroblast, who was the Pokemon that Ash had. I mean that that uh Drax it out of its Pokeball at the time, as Griefus was in the Pokeball resting. Gyroblast th then scanned Chimchar, transforming it for the first time into its psychic type form, which had, which instead of having the blasters, the big machine guns on its back, it had a it had a pink ring with floating with weird little floating star shaped objects. He th he realized that his trainer wasn't actually a good person, which kind of ticked off Gyroblast. Jarablast then explained that he read his mind and sa said how bad of a tra trainer his trainer actually was. And Charmander at first didn't believe him before Drax then before then uh, uh, Drax sent out his his uh, Lopany to go and spy on this trainer. He'd actually gotten the coordinates of where, of where he was thanks to the fact that Jarablast had like a scanning system. So he so Lopany had burrowed underground to go search for search for this trainer and he also made sure to have him take a recorder with him and record everything that Dam Damien was saying before bringing it back to Charmander Charmander realizing this was very ang angry that his trainer would lie to him like that and that how lazy his trainer was and so he decided to vent to travel with with uh, with uh Ash's group for a while not being caught yet but traveling with them to learn what it really meant to be strong After a while, they got to Saffron City, where an old man warned them about about how um, the gym leader was would would like no people would go in, but nobody would come out. Drax, of course, was kind of bo bothered by this, so he sent he sent out both his Griefist and Gyroblast as protect uh, for protection. Why did he send out both of them? Well, simple. For starters, Griefist can learn. Griefist has a psychic type form, and so does Gyroblast. And doing so, they were actually they were actually able to figure out what was going on with her, and that and the fact that she well was unhappy, which of course kind of threw them off because why would this? Why would there be two? Why would she like make a small clone of herself? And like why would she capture people? Why doesn't she just talk to somebody about it? You know, like a normal decent human being, instead of capturing them and using them as toys. Only if you guys are wondering, here's a here's Griefus psych type form, which is based off of Gardevoir's shiny shiny form. And yes, it has like little floating hands next to it. Let me just scoot this over so you can see the hand better. Yeah, there you go. So they eventually got got it through to to Sabrina's head that she didn't really have to capture anyone and she should just talk to somebody if that was the case. Um to where Serena I mean not Serena, Sabrina finally went back to normal. And they had a normal gym battle this time. Well, Ash and her did, because he Drax wasn't really interested in the gym challenge for this region yet, because so far he so far from what he'd seen, 
The first three gym leaders were terrible gym leaders. The first one was a father who abandoned his, his kids, like, not on purpose, but still did it. The second one was a bunch of idiots. And the third one was a, was a stubborn, little, stubborn girl who didn't talk to anybody about her problems. Who also happened to be portraying people into toys and kidnapping them. So yeah, not a very good look for her. Seeing Ash's gym battle, Charmander decided that he wanted to travel with Ash. Because, for one, Ash seemed like a really good trainer. No thanks to Drax. I mean, thanks to Drax. And that meant that, meant that he was and he was kind to his Pokemon. That was much better than how Damien treated him. So, he joined Ash. Ash receiving his second Pokemon, which happened to be a Charmander. Dr Drax made a joke about how, how Ash would probably end up ca catching the, all the other starters at this rate, including Eevee. Ash stared at him confused, at, asking him what he means by Eevee. Drax told him that Eevee is technically considered a starter in some of the other re regions because Eevee is so popular, just like Pikachu. Ash w wondered about that and wanted to eventually catch himself an Eevee, w but he w but he didn't but he uh, wanted to he figured he would have trouble figuring out which of the three evolutions to turn Eevee into. Drax then stared over stared over at Ash and said, "There are eight evolutions for the Eevee line that are known at the moment." Ash. Ash stared at him in, in shock and asked him what the types were. He said, well, those are the three types you know of, being the fire, uh, water, and electric types. But the other ones are can be found in Johto, Sinnoh, and Kalos, specifically. But you have to get them, but it gets harder as, as you want to get them. For starters, if you want the fairy type one, which immediately draw, draw all, the, all of them to stare at him, not knowing what a fairy type was. Drax then looked at him, looked at him and said, do you guys just not know anything about Pokemon over, over in this region? Jigglypuff is a fairy type. Ash, Ash just stared back and blinked a few times. Oh my gosh, who's the professor in, in this region? He said, Professor Oak. Like, he's like, everyone talks good about that guy, but yet he doesn't seem to know what a fairy type is. Jiggly, you have a, you have like two different fairy types over in this region. Fairy, uh, Jigglypuff and Clefairy. One of them literally has fairy in the name. There's also Granbull. Actually, I don't know. I don't remember if Granbull's from Kanto or from Johto. I think it's from Johto. Yeah. So he went through explaining them to, to them that fairy type is the is a good counter for dragon type, being it actually is immune to dragon type attacks, and it's probably good to catch one. He also expl explained that fairy types are super strong against dark, fighting, and dragon. But they are weak to fairy and steel. I mean, weak to poison and steel. He then explained the different evol evolutions, starting with Umbreon and Espeon, saying that you have to have a strong bond with both of them, and depending on if it's morning or night, you'll get Umbreon or Espeon. One's a dark type, one's a, one's a psychic type. He then explained about Glaceon and, and Leafeon, saying that Glaceon needs to either have an... Give, be, give, Eevee needs to be either given an Ice Stone or a, or a Leaf Stone to evolve in, into either one, or you just need to, let, need to train next to a mossy rock. And then finally he got to um, Sylveon, saying that... Sylve that Eevee must know a fairy type move, and you must have a strong bond with you before evolving. Knowing about about this, um, and, and knowing that it would probably be easier for Ash if he got if he got a um a Pokemon that was strong for the next upcoming gym, which happened to be Electric, he decided that he needed to get a hold of a Grass type, so he wanted to get a Leafy on. First of all, they needed to find an Eevee, and luckily, since since Drax happened to have his uh, Glaceon with him at the time, he let her out of it, out of her Pokeball. And everyone just stared, wondering why his Glaceon looked not like what they expected. He explained to them that an experiment went wrong, and now he can't fix Glaceon's appearance because she's too used to this form, and she likes the fact that she has hands. Ash asked what a normal Glaceon looks like, and Drax showed him a picture, showing that it, it did actually look more like a, like a fox than than Drax's Glaceon did. He also showed him a picture of Leafeon, and, well, they went out to go find an Eevee. Thanks to Glaceon being able to actually sense when there was an Eevee nearby, thanks to her being, well, used to being an Eevee, they found an Eevee. And that Eevee was, ve was very, very, um, uh, how should I put this, uh, competitive and battle-hungry. Ash, Ash liked that, and he, and, he, and he said that he challenges Eevee to a to a battle and said he would hap happily catch Eevee. And so they caught Eevee. And Eevee was w developed a kind of a rivalry with, with Pikachu and and um, Charmander. Ash pretty much had like three different starters now. 
and uh, Drax gave, gave Ash a leaf stone for when, or for when Eevee was ready to evolve. But to, to everyone's shock, Eevee didn't want to be a Leafeon. Eevee wanted to wanted to evolve into a one second into a Sylveon so that she so that she could dominate the dragon types. Ash, of course, didn't really want to evolve, but but Drax told told him that it's better to to let the Pokemon do evolve what, into what they want to evolve into, because once again, these are living creatures and they should have the right to choose what they evolve into. Ash agreed, and so they tried to teach Eevee a fairy type move, and luckily, thanks to um, Griefist, who came out of her Pokeball to assist with this, she and and of course transformed into her fairy type form, which was pretty much. Which happened to be a uh, her colors were inverted to a compared to a guard of war, and she also ha she also still wore had a skirt instead and had a had a long uh, spiky whatever this is coming out of the back of her head. I don't remember what the appropriate term for it is. I want to say spiky ponytail, but it doesn't really strike as a ponytail to me. Anyway, so it took a little bit, but Evie finally learned um learned a fairy type move. But now they now came to the part where Ash had to actually bond with his Evie, and it took them a while, but. The bond was was strong enough to where Eevee was pretty close to evolving. Eventually, they came to the, ne the next gym, which happened to be a electric type gym. And Ash was a bit worried because, for one, his Pikachu only knew one ground type move at the moment, which was Dig, and Pikachu's other moves were were taken up by two electric type moves and Surf. Drax then looked over looked over at Ash and and asked, "Why do your Pokemon only know four moves?" Ash said, that's the max amount of moves that a Pokemon can learn. Drax simply looked at him and said, who says? All my Pokemon know at least 12 moves each. Drax just stared at him, stared at him for a second. Before before Dra Drax said, I trained hard with my Pokemon. If, if you want your Pokemon to be strong, you have to break the limits that a, that a normal Pokemon has. That's why I helped, helped your, your Pikachu learn Surf. Drax then proceeded to put Ash through the hardest training of his life. Along with his Pokemon, which by that point, his Eevee evolved into Sylveon finally, and also had learned the move Dig. His Charmander had learned the move Sand Punch, which was a move which is a move that Drax actually had made up for his uh, for his Griefus, because Griefus can know multiple different kinds of moves, and Sand Punch was useful for for its ground type form. Ash was now ready for the for the gym, and it, luckily it was a two it was a three on three. And he was worried because the only Pokemon he had that didn't have a ground type move was his Sylveon, but Drax said he has this in the bag. Surge, of course, insulted Ash's Pikachu for not for not evolving, but Ash, but but Drax simply yelled yelled at Surge, say, saying that if if he was smart, he would not force his Pokemon to evolve early because Pikachu no can learn moves that Raichu can't, which proceeded to then get Raichu's butt handed to him on a silver platter because. Because of the fact that Pikachu knew Dig, and he knew like several other moves that that Pikachu had no right no right knowing, but he still knew anyway, thanks to Drax helping Pikachu shatter through the uh, limits that normal Pikachu have. There was also the fa fact that um, Surge kept ac accusing Ash of using a move that wasn't actually a move, but Dra Drax said, "You can't do you can't say that, considering that Pokemon learn come up with new moves all the time in the wild. I just helped helped his Charmander come up with a new with a new move that nobody else has." Except for me, of course. Of course, this ended up with Ash walking away from the gym with his badge. Like, rather easily. And Surge had a lot of thinking to do about how he lived his lifestyle and how he, you know, trained his Pokemon. As they were tra traveling to the next gym, which happened to be um, the Grass-type gym, which Drax explained ahead of time to Ash that, that the gym leader also ran a perfume store, nearby, and that it was probably a good idea in case, you know, Misty decided to go to that gym to not insult that, because uh, he knew how Ash was. On their way, they ran into three pe three people, or two people and a Pokemon that was speaking English, which immediately grabbed at Drax's attention. And this, pe these people happened to be Team Rocket, who had recently joined. In this universe, Jesse and J James and Meowth had joined Team Rocket a bit later in the story. And they claimed that they wanted to steal Drax's Pokemon that can speak English. That could speak, uh, human. And then Dra Drax simply said, You guys have a talking Meowth. I know that I didn't get... I, I know that I've never seen you guys before, so I know that you didn't, you didn't give him that ability through, through my technology. 
both Jesse James and Meowth looked at each other and said, "Wait, your Pokemon, your Pokemon were di were given that ability through through uh, tech." He's like, "Yeah." She's like, "Then we're gonna steal your tech." He's like, "I don't think you will." Superior came out came out of the mall, and so did the Arbok. And, I mean, so did the Ekans and coughing that Jesse and James had. Both Ekans and Ekans and coughing looked up at, at Superior, who was grinning at them maliciously because of the fact that it was a ground type and could easily overpower them with its ground type moves, along with its well, superior poison. Immediately, our, um, Weezing and Nickens went back into their Pokeballs. Jesse and James looking back and back and back at them, saying, "Well, that was our only Pokemon. Now what?" He's like, "Why doesn't the Meowth fight? He he can, he obviously has the ability to stand on two legs. I don't see why he shouldn't be able to fight." And then Meowth just said, "Fighting is, I am too far above fighting. I'm a I'm a Meowth that can talk. I'm a Meowth that walks on two legs." I don't need to fight. I'm like pretty much like a human in a Pokemon's body. Then one of Drax's Pokeballs flew, um, opened up inside of his armor, and and out and out of the armor flew Glaceon, in her in her, in her well other form, and, and simply told me up if that was the case, if that was the case, I wouldn't be back. I wouldn't be trying to kick your butt right now for saying that. That means you're weaker than me. Instantly, Glaceon be began laying the smack down on, on Meowth, pounding him o into the ground over and over again, with ice punch after ice punch. Yes, because this Glaceon has hands, so she can do that. Before, the, before then slant, punching him so hard with a mock punch that he sent, was sent flying into a tree. Jesse and James stared, stared in shock at, at what appeared to be a, a human-Pokemon hybrid. Before the Pokemon, before then Glaceon gla glared at them, saying, You guys don't seem, as ba seem that bad for... For being Team Rocket members, you clearly care about your Pokemon. So why are you part of them? Jesse and J James simply said there was nowhere else for them to go because, well, they had like literally nothing. They were part of a biker gang before this. Then, then that's when uh, Griefist and Jarblast came out of their Pokeballs and said, "And said you guys can come." And said, "You guys can come with us. We can train you guys on how to on how to be stronger and how to actually be successful." You know. And then, then, uh, Griefus pointed over at, pointed over at Ash and said, that kid wouldn't have gotten this far without us. With Ash protesting about this, but, th but then thinking better on it, because, yeah, that was kind of true. So, they had a couple new mem members traveling with them, being in Jesse and James, who were more, more often than not getting training from Drax over, you know, hanging out with the other three. As they as they get continued with Jesse and James actually leaving Team Rocket in the process, which didn't really sit well with Giovanni, he him sending a couple of his operatives after them. This did not go well for them because they came back came back with quite a few bruises, and they got the blasting off again treatment that Jesse and James would have got if the, if Drax hadn't actually you know convinced them to join their side. As the group began began traveling again, along with the with the, with the new additions being Jesse James and Meowth who Meowth had actually gotten more training and learned that he was actually incapable of evolving, which then led Drax to believe that maybe he was able to Dynamax or something else, or Gigantamax in this case. Drax didn't really know much about, about how go, go, the Galarian customs worked. Speaking of Galar, something br brown shot past them, running running really fast on the ground. Drax managed to get a good look at it before before then st staring in utter confusion and, and disbelief at what he just saw. Ash looked at him and asked what that was. He said, that was a Galarian Zapdos. He said, a Galarian Zapdos? He said, Ash, what's a Galarian Zapdos? It's, he said, it's a fighting type version of Zapdos from, from, another, from another region. It is still a flying type, but it can't really fly all that well. Also, it shouldn't have been able to come, it shouldn't be here in this, in this uh, region, considering that it can't really fly for very long. And if it can't, and when it does fly, it doesn't go very far. He had to go all the way across the ocean to get here. How the heck is he here? Drax then, then sent sent out his uh, his superior and told and told superior to go chase down Zapdos, which it did, and only only to realize that Zapdos had changed shape somehow. Instead of instead of catching up to a Zapdos, instead standing standing there was, which and it, and it had stopped moving at this point. Instead of a Zapdos standing there was a Sandy Shocks. Drax caught up with with with, uh, with Superior, and standing there was, of course, what what he saw in in the crater of Paldea, a Sandy Shocks. 
He then looked looked back looked back and forth between Superior and the and the Sandy Shocks before saying, "Okay, that's either a Ditto, a Mew, or or a uh, Zorua." The uh, the Sandy Shocks then gr grinned with its rather weird snowman looking smile, before then snickering and then transforming again into a into what looked like a Magnezone and then flying away. Ash then sent sent out his Griefist, which transformed into into its fire type form, and shot down the Magnezone. It didn't do as much damage as he thought as he thought it would, which meant that he was right. It was a it was a Zorua. He went over to the po to the Pokemon, and asked what it's doing all the way out here in uh, out of Unova. The uh, the Pokemon of course responded in its usual language with Griefus translating for it, and the Pokemon said said and and, Grief, and Zorua was still in uh, was still in its uh, Magnezone disguise and Zor Zorua simply said that it doesn't it doesn't live in Unova it's from it's from uh, Hisui and Drax then just stared at it and said Hisui is, doesn't exist anymore and Sinnoh is what it's called now he then he then looked looked at the uh, Zorua and it transformed back to normal, only for Drax to realize that Zorua had did not look like a regular Zorua. It was white and red instead of black, instead of the usual black that a Zorua was. He looked at it and and said, "I didn't know Zorua had a regional variant." The Zorua looked at him and, a and asked what he meant. And Drax sent out his Zorua, which he still which he kept with him in his backpack. He swapped it out for one of his other Pokemon. And Zorua was shocked looking at this one. It looked more, well, different than he than he thought. And of course, Zorua sa said that this is not how Zorua are supposed to look. This is not where, how they look where he's from. And Z he asked where Zorua was from, and he and he said he was from the Glacado Mountains near near the, uh, or I think that's what they're called, nearby where the uh, where the uh, noble Pokemon uh, Avalog lives. Drax had never heard of this, and then asked another another question. He held he held up a uh, he held up a a, a, poke, a Pokeball and asked him if he knew what this was. Um, Zorua said it looks different from the ones that the human that the humans normally use, and you're all dressed weird too, especially you with the weird with the weird metal hands. He said he said gesturing towards Drax. Drax then, Drax then said, "These aren't my hands. These are just. This is just a suit." But then Drax said, "I think we have some time shenanigans going on here." He said, "Only to be met, to be met with a uh, temporal rift opening opening up right ne right next to him as a <clears throat> as an alpha lopany nearly landed on landed on on top of him. He jumped out of the way in, but in the, out of the way in time. But then the lopany set their set its eyes on." on them and began to attack. Drax sent out his Lopany, which was able to actually easily overpower the Alpha, thanks to its fighting type fighting type abilities. He then threw threw his Pokeball to catch the catch the Lopany. And then said, that Lopany is way too big than it need way more way too big for its for what it is. Zorba responded saying it's an Alpha Pokemon and that it's that they're like the better of of all the other Pokemon that exist and where he all the Pokemon that where he's from. He's like, I have never won Drax said, "I have never once heard of an Alpha Pokemon," and he and he then decided that it was it was time to figure out where these temporal rifts were coming from. Only to see only to see a uh, a uh, pink Celebi in the tree snickering at them, but he wasn't fooled this time. He knew that that wasn't actually a Celebi, so he so he had his uh, Gyroblast use use a um go into its fire type form. And use its move ca called. Uh, I forgot what I named the move. I think I need. I think it named it ballistics, which bla which blasted a, bun a bunch of vulca uh, volcano fire at the Selby, knocking it out and watching as it reverted into a Mew. This Mew was blue. It was shiny. Drax said, "I kind of figured there was more than one Mew in this world. I've seen several. Several. I've seen one at the Tree of Harmony, and I saw a pink one the other day. The one at the Tree of Harmony was was white for some reason." I guess that's a weird, different. I guess that's a albino Mew. I didn't think that was a po possible thing, but eh. he then caught, caught the Mew, and he offered to 
he offered to have Mew send Zorwa and the Alpha Lopany back to where they came from, but Zorwa, Zorwa said, I'd rather just stay here because because it's been a while since somebody's been able to figure, figure out my my um, illusion, and I want to see if I can learn how to do more stuff. So, so uh, Drax did not have any other Pokeballs on him, but Ash offered that he would be happy to catch to catch Zorua if it meant if it meant that he that um they could you know get if it meant that they could what's the word I'm looking for help each other that's the word I'm looking for. They went on to the to the next gym and of course many people were shocked at the giant Lopany and the weird looking Zorua, which they have, had never seen either because for some reason people in Kanto don't know what other don't don't know about the existence of other regions. Um. Specifically, specifically, the giant Lopany was kind of glaring at everybody that, that came within 20 feet of her. With Drax, with the other Lopany, the male one, the one that's not an alpha, t telling her to chill because it's not that big a deal, and that these people are not, you know, glaring at glaring at them out of hatred. They're just glaring at, not, not glaring at him or anything, they're just like staring at him because they've never seen you before. And of course they made it to the next gym, which was of course the grass-type gym. And... Erica was shocked at the weird Pokemon that she'd never seen before. Drax rolling his eyes with, with annoyance, realizing that everybody in Kanto might be like this. Even eventually, um, Ash got his gym 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 battle, and he decided to use Zorua, Charmander, and Sylveon. Unfortunately, Pikachu didn't get to join, even though he really wanted to. Luckily, they um, Zorua was the first to go first out, and it actually yet it had um, confused um, uh, Erica into thinking that it, that he had sent out his um, Sylveon first. So she had gotten ready to use a poison type move, and Zor and once it hit, it didn't. Zorua's illusion wore off, turning transforming Zorua back into well Zorua. He Ash then had Zorua use use the move which which was called. Um, Shadow Claw, which just one shot the Pokemon. Ash just stared at Zorua, realizing that he wasn't actually asking Zorua that if he was really that strong. Zorua said, saying, "I'm the strongest in my pack. I might be a Zorua, but that doesn't mean I'm weak." Next, next up, er Erica sent sent out her um, Blossom, which was also one shot by Zorua. Ash then returned Zorua, saying he might want to get his other Pokemon a bit, a bit, give them a bit more action. So he then sent out Charmander, and this is what this was when he went up against Scyther. Yeah, and this I don't know, I don't really remember what Pokemon uh, Erica uses in the actual anime. It's been a while since I've watched the se the first season of it, but um, as they're as they're battling, Charmander evolves into Charmeleon, and also learns the move Fire Punch. Which comes in very useful, meaning that Ash's Charm Charmeleon now knows about at least ten different moves. Of course, um, Erica is shocked at how powerful Ash's Pokemon are, and Ash says that he's actually been training with it with his uh, friend with his friend Drax, who has been who's got really powerful Pokemon. Erica, looking up, actually recognizes Drax as one of the stronger trainers from Unova, who who's always been traveling the world. She then noticed the the rather human looking Glaceon next to him and asked him about it. Him say, him saying that accidental ex experiment went wrong and now I can't change her back because she doesn't want to go back to normal. Erica simply just took that as a took that as a normal thing where he was from, and let let them go on their way. So for now, I'm gonna end the video here. But if you guys enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. I will see you for the next one, and hopefully I'll have more of Drax's Pokemon drawn because right now I only have his. His uh, Griefist, Jarblast, and all their forms. Um, his Lopany, his uh, um, his Iron Valiant, his Superior, his his uh, Glaceon, and um, I'm currently right now working on on a female version of the uh, of the of his Lopany, of the regional variant of Lopany. I do have they do have like two forms, and the and the difference is depending on the uh, on the on the pattern of the fur. So like, okay, let me show you. Come on, here we go. So like, so the male has like this little patch of brown right here and most of their body is like black with like a few little gray patches of fur, but with a female Lopany, most of their body is gray.
and then like the uh, patches in the middle are brown and then I mean are black and then like the ears and like the feet and the eyebrows would be brown. I mean, not brown. Yeah, 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 I meant brown. Anyway, um if you guys enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and I will see you for the next one.